Hey, it's Joe Glass from the Automator, and uh, another episode of uh, what we automated this week with Auto Hockey. So, of course, with the Automator, we basically almost predominantly only use Auto Hockey. It's not quite it. We do, uh, you know, some other JavaScript and PHP, some other code. I do research of SPSS, uh, but let me go ahead and show you what I just did was searched for files modified in the last seven days on my C drive, which everything is under there to some degree. And let's start. So, um, this media player, yeah, we. I think I touched on this last week. It's pretty cool. It, um, I had one that was in V1, but now I can, and I don't want to play music because uh, if I do, it'll start, I'll have copyright issues. So I guess I could mute it. Let me mute real quick. Well, that right there, so I can increase and decrease the volumes. I have hotkeys. It, it uses the comm object to play the media player. But what I wanted to show you was if I hit control S, control shift S, it'll skip. I'll hopefully remember to go back and remove that audio. Uh, I lowered the volume down to zero because I can do that. I'm going to select a folder. So it started off with what the folder I was in. Um, and I'll play this. It would loop over all the files in there. And it shows them what's cool. Now, that's interesting. I think maybe it's running twice. But I can click here, and it'll come back up. And I can click this, and it would actually pull it up in the Amazon search. Um, I need to tie in. He was supposed to tie in to if the artist is listed, it should pull in the artist as well. So it should have brought in ambrosia and the title right it clearly didn't do that yet but um still room to grow but i added it's really cool i added my own hotkeys and stuff so i can do it it's really flexible um and if i was tired of a song i can hit control shift d oh no that's um control oh yeah control shift delete oh that's funny he didn't implement that yet but if i should delete the file if i'm tired of listening to it so um this is all in v2 we'll be sharing that one maybe next week maybe um hopefully let me get back to my list of files um, Jeannie, again, Brent's a uh, dentist out of Australia, and we updated. He had a new project, so let me touch real lightly on this. He would, his tool, they, they made an update to his program, and unfortunately, some of his stuff was broken, so we had to go fix that, which is really rare. Someone updates their program, right, and breaks things, but this guy, this tool did. <clears throat> the other thing was he had a request where when text was a certain way he wanted to replace it and so what we did was we started monitoring he does a search replace for the person so he has a template where he let's, let's just say like it's like a jane doe or john doe right in the United states it's something else that he uses and in his text and then he goes back and gets the name of his patient and does a, a mail replace to go through the document well what we did was we monitored the clipboard with clipway or no clip um clip on clip change and we're monitoring, checking to see if it was text, seeing if there was certain something there, and then we would do a replacement for him. So that's going to save him a lot of time. Um, this next one here, adding bomb to a file. I think I mentioned where I'm doing some market research stuff in Alchemer slash Survey Gizmo. And when you export the tool from their data, it doesn't show up with the bomb, unfortunately. And Excel expects it to have a bomb, and so the file actually looks messed up when you go to import it. So I wrote, I had ChatGPT write me a simple script in V1, and then I had the guys, um, I think Irfan did it, converted it to V2, and which leads us into the next one. I'm actually also using, because even though I'm exporting the survey data, the questionnaire itself has all these labels and everything, and the my client has API access to the tool. So years ago, Maestruth and I, we were working on this, he had automated a bunch of the stuff, so I was borrowing from that, making sure it worked. Checked it out this morning. I was doing a little bit more getting it. I can pull the the question and get the labels. So that'll all be API access. And that's going to help me write my syntax file. So that'll be really handy. Now, I did want to show my show the, um. let's see here. Not every plan has API access. And a lot of the plans, unless you're paying, I don't know, it's like a hundred bucks a month, somewhere in there, you don't have API access. And so, of course, Every browser call is an API call. It's whether you have access to their public API or not, whether they let you or not. And so in order to, my friend Mike has, he's paying over like a hundred bucks a month to get certain level of access, which he has API access, but not everyone will. So I was thinking, hey, let's look at the browser traffic and see here what's actually being done. And maybe we can back in the browser, uh, the API calls, which of course, regardless, you can, it's just a matter of how much work will it be. Now, in this particular website, there was no JSON or XML in, in any of the payloads or anywhere. So we're going to have to detangle it from the DOM, which is still fine because we can do that. Uh, however, when there's more than one page, now here, this is a one page survey where I was just asking for the catchphrases. Um, if I remember, I'll put the URL up here if you can vote on it. It'd be great. But um, you know what? 
Control Shift Escape. There it goes. Irfan was looking at it, and what we can do is when you pull the page, we could pull that information and detangle it from the HTML and get these labels. Because what we need is, hey, the first question, even though this is all one question, right? This is the, you could, it's a multiple select option. So each one of these has a data point, a column or a field or a variable in the data set. So we need each one of these to label the data file, right? So um, we can programmatically get that. Uh, the problem is with this approach is now if there were several pages, I'd have to, because you can only show up to 10 pages at a time, I'd have to make sure we go to the next pages. And, and that's not a great plan overall. It's still better than doing this manually because it really sucks. But yes, yeah, so that's that's what we're doing with Survey Gizmo or Alchemer. Um, they changed names a while back. So unit. Um, Isaias was working on the data file. We're working on a study and extracting it. So he was doing unit testing. We have a good video on that where we show how to build some logic and tests. And then when you keep adding to it, you can just rerun your test to make sure it didn't break anything. So he actually did that with this tool, uh, the People Data Labs. I mentioned that. Uh, my my next plan was I'm still going to append data to people. Um, and I'm going to profile who's spending money and who's not. And then, you know, obviously I want to target people who are spending money. So find out who they are, right, and go after more people like them. Clip share, we've made some updates to that. We added some audio. It's pretty funny. I can't do it. Um, I don't think I can do it. I don't think it'll share the audio with myself. Uh, but let me let me see here. So Alt Shift M. Um, I'm going to send something to myself, which is, I don't know if this works. Now I'm going to say hello there when I do this. I don't know if you heard that audio. Um, and it stays up until we click. Now that clip share, we haven't shared that yet. But it's uh, it allows me to share my clipboard with Isaiah and Irfan, and if I tag them, so if I hit Alt M, oh Alt Shift M, and I tag them or the team, um, they get now they get an audio alert. Who are you? Who are you? What are you going to do? No. no. So hopefully you can hear this. And uh, I don't, yeah, yes, that one's a bit extreme. I don't know if you could hear all that, but um. It now has audio clips because with Telegram, even though Telegram's amazing, if you're on the last message with the person and they're still there, it doesn't make an audio sound to let them know that you pinged them. So it's really annoying. Um, so we we updated ClipShare to put notifications both uh, graphical on the screen and they stay up until you click them or with the audio sounds. So um, this is a part of the ClipShare library. Notify me too. Now we... Re I don't actually, I don't know if it's released, but I'll put the URL up here on the screen. Um, it's just the automator slash notify v2 to get that script, which is the one that we were demonstrating some of these other tools, but it's really flexible. You can put up images, you can have the hyperlinks in them, you can use icons, you can use regular, like um, I think JPEGs and PNGs and icon files, and um, you can have callbacks. It's, it's really, really flexible. So um, I, I'm really happy to finally gotten that out there and it's it's wild but it's uh it's really check out the video we we had a ton of examples in the file and even though it's a class if you understand functions and objects you, you'll be fine using it this mp3 ripper i just used this this morning i had to make a little update because what it does is it uses ffmpeg and it creates a gui and let me i can at least launch it here it should launch fine i can drag folders or files in here and it will rip the audio out of them, saving them as an MP3 file into that same folder. And it, it does it recursively. But what was interesting was in it, um, I found some WMA files on my computer, which I hadn't didn't know I had. And I'm like, oh, let me let me convert those. Well, I dragged them in here and it didn't do anything. And I realized in the extension list in the um the script, I didn't have, let me see if it's open here. I didn't have uh can I say edit from here, I think. Yeah. Now this relies on FFmpeg and where we have a simple GUI here to say, well, what format do you wanna rip it out in? But if you look somewhere in here, these are all audio files. And at the time we didn't have WMA listed here. So all I had to do, this is why I love writing my own stuff, right? All I had to do was go back and add WMA in this list and then it would try. It doesn't mean it would work perfectly, but at least it would try it. And so sure enough, it converted everything really fast too. It was crazy how fast it would it would burn through those and convert them. But that was really cool. Um, more in clip share. Here are a bunch of here are the seven files from examples from the notify class. We got all that done and Irfan and I made a video on that. I think that was Monday morning. 
sharing that. Um, but but if there's in, inside each of these seven files, there's, I don't know, three to maybe eight examples in each one. I mean, there's a lot of examples. So it's a fun one to work through. Also, this, it just reminded me is that you can trigger it from other programs, even from the command line. So you can pass parameters to it without even including it, just pass parameters to it, and it will do the notifications for you without even being part of it, which is really cool. Uh, there's the media player, the office path. This is pretty cool because in office, if you have a file open, let me see if I can open a file here. Um, it used to be very simple to grab the path of that file. And now it's a nightmare. Like it's really hard. So um, this was the one of the newsletters I did the other day. So there's no, it's, it is somewhere. I forget where um, you can, you can get the, like that. It's open, but I, I can't even, like, I don't even remember how to get the path. I know there's a way, but it's, it's just not obvious and it's really annoying. So um, I had Urfian use the com object and say, hey, if, you know, if I hit control shift C, get the path of that file. Uh, so it works for PowerPoint, Excel, Word. Um, and then we're going to add some other things as well. Because even in uh, like WinSCP, which is a FTP protocol tool and stuff, a lot of times, and if I'm just an explorer, it'll get the path. So it's really handy. So that's what that office path is. Um, this until example, this is why I'm actually running right now. I'm running um, OBS. Let me bring over OBS. It's going to probably look a little weird because I'll be here twice. Now I'm going to hit the home key and this pulls up this GUI and I can type, um, I'll do the notify. So let me get rid of the front here. Now, when I hit enter, you'll notice after a second or so, it appears above me, right? That's because in OBS, I have it monitoring a local file and that script, when I hit my home key, it pops open with, um, it's not, it's a scintilla editor, which is really nice also. That's why it doesn't look like the normal one, but it allows me to, to use um, the control backspace and other stuff, more advanced stuff. But, um, and I can see the, H, the hyperlink protocol stuff as well, because we added that to it. So, um, that's how I do these notifications, um, and I can just update them during a live call. And if I want to give people a notification or something or tell them where it is or whatever, it's super handy. I can do this on the fly. So I, I love that. So let me let me go ahead and get rid of that just because – so I just delete it and hit enter, close it. And that should disappear, I think, here in a second. API call – so here I was debating on trying to do pricing for different countries um, for our courses, and we still might go that route, but boy, it's complicated. But I did find an API for looking up the, the cost of living in different countries and for getting looking up taking an IP address and getting what country it's from. Um, so that's just something that, you know, if you're doing business, it, it helps because a lot of businesses, a lot of people live in countries that things are far, far less um, the cost of living. And so if you're selling something for a hundred dollars to them, it's more like a thousand dollars, you know, it depends on where they are, but yeah, what's that? This wind hook. I don't actually, I don't know what we were doing with that. I'm not sure. Usually I know everything we're working on, but I'm not sure what they were doing with that. They were probably trying to play with, Oh, the automator spy using some wind hooks. Okay. Now the ACC and UIA, um, what's cool. Let me go ahead and launch the ultimate spy. Because this one, I checked it out before I started. Oh, come on. Before I started the recording. And this is, at least it'll launch. I did see it had a bug. Um, what's cool with this, now let me, so let me drag this to something. And here, you get an idea of the different interfaces you can use to automate a program, right? That's pretty cool. But then let's say it says, oh, hey, look, UIA is available. Now I can come up here and I can choose UIA. And it'll swap to the UIA discovery tool. So now that's in there. So this is where we're having a little bit of interest there. That's fine. We'll, we'll work through it. This is why we haven't really released this big one yet. But um, the other cool thing that Irfan did was if I launch Notepad as an admin, now if you get the UIA viewer tool from Descalada, uh, from his GitHub repository or from the forum, um, it it currently doesn't have this. So see how that says admin mode detected? which is really, really helpful because it's very easy to not see that and to mess up. Oops, I think it's F1 is what I got to hit. Um, now we're off of it, but yeah. So you get the idea, right? So 
Irfian had added it to both the UIA viewer and to ACC viewer. So that that's why we had edited those files. Um, otherwise, you can just get those from the Sklada's website or, or GitHub, and those those will work just fine. Of course, they're not tied into our discovery tool, which is pretty amazing, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, yeah, we'll see that URL decode. So that just takes the a URL and we'll URI encode it. So the like the space will be a percent twenty type of thing, right? Um, I'm not sure what we were doing. I guess this is something else. YouTube schedule. So this one, and I haven't. It's, it's I've just been so busy. We, I asked our fan to write a script to automate posting to the com, um, community in the YouTube section. And we also have one for automating tweets. And so on Twitter or X. So now I can take a bunch of them and schedule them ahead of time. So that's what that uh, this one does. Is it YouTube schedule? Or this questionnaire, this is the one where I was playing with Survey Gizmo. Like I said, we had a lot of files with Maestrieth years ago of even developing the surveys and extracting data and looking at the responses. And so I was just playing around looking at the different ones we had. Um, the automating the bomb, I think I already mentioned that. Of course, I updated my main one. Um, this is my auto. Let's go ahead. I'll open up this one here just to show you. I mentioned it last week. I don't think I demonstrated or showed it, but uh, this was the precursor to Clipster. And it allows me to, you know, have something short to type. So I could type a.api. And it's going to paste this, right? So a lot of editing tools were having problems receiving uh, hot streams or, or even sending text. So this, I don't know if it'll work down here or not. Actually, Studio is one of those programs that it doesn't like them. So let's see if it works. So I'm going to do h.bd, h.bd. Oh, it, oh, it's not running. No, it's running. Let me um go do here h dot b z what all right a dot con okay so the <laughs> consult link whooped i'm not sure why that first one didn't work a dot api and that sends it right away also the asterisk says send it right away the x says hey the thing to the right is an actual auto hotkey command or, or function and in this case it's a function so that way we have it all in one line which is really handy now <laughs> clipster allows you to actually to have something like this and then it will paste in a picture if you have a path to the picture it can paste that um or even html if you have html there it will render it and then put it into your clipboard rendered and paste it like into word which is really really handy if you have something that you need that kind of structure i use it in this one this is a v1 version I use it for doing stuff when I'm writing the newsletter or, you know, I'm on a call or responding to YouTube video comments. It makes it very easy to give that. But then I also have paths to folders that I open often. So both of those are really, really helpful to be able to navigate very quickly to a folder or to be able to paste something. But yeah, that that's a great tool. Um, the Clipster is the one that you'd want to grab though. And then the script icon we were digging around trying to find some icons. What program were we working on? Oh, the the media player. And this one, let's see if I can launch it here. This is an older one, a V1 version, where you can select the different two different DLLs. And it takes a while just because of how I wrote it. Uh, but when you double click it, it puts, this is the syntax for V1 to create the system tray icon for you. And look what I got. Um, oh, that's running twice. That's part of the problem. Um, but yeah, you get the idea here. That's the, the scripts tray icon. But see this one? That's how I you can write that and change the icon, right? So if you notice, I don't have 80 green H's in my system tray, even though a lot of these are like, that's an auto hotkey script. This is an auto hotkey script. So is this one. So is this one and this one. That's QAP. This is my FFmpeg. Um, another one, my scripting tool or window snipping tool. Yeah, so you get the idea, right? There's a lot of them, and then there's still this one and this one. This is my main one. So all of those, this is great for changing that icon, right? So I got a video on that if you want to watch it. And we have a version that does – we have one that was great that actually has it where you can search for words, and it will pull up from a database how they were tagged. Unfortunately, Windows 11 changed a lot of what they point to, the, the icons and what they mean, so the, the tags aren't legit anymore. So it's really – 
truly annoying. Uh, maybe we'll use AI to loop across the icons and categorize them and update it because it's it was a major bummer to do all that work. And, and we, we paid someone to go through and tag thousands of them. And then uh, and then now on Windows 11, it's they're wrong, quote unquote, wrong. They're different. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed that and want to see more of these videos, uh, please like the video. It really helps us out. And feel free to reach out to us if you have questions on things. We you know, are the largest auto hockey channel out there. This is all we do, basically. And we help people learn auto hockey. We got a lot of great courses that come with a 200% money back guarantee. So you have nothing to lose and only time to gain, right? Like you just, you realize the more and more, the more you do, the more you can automate and save more time, which adds more time to where you can learn more stuff to save more time. So hope you enjoyed that. Cheers.